In the tradition of RME's product philosophy, the ADI2 series received a ton of new features and enhancements over the last three years. Because we can't list every edition, here are some of our favorites. Number one, additional level meter color amber. Apart from cyan and green, you now have the new meter color amber. To change the meter color, go to Setup, Options, Display and then select meter color. Amber is nice on the eye and fits perfectly when combining the unit with other devices that have old style VU meters with yellow background lamps. Number two, additional horizontal meter options. The stereo level display at the bottom of the analyzer always showed the volume level after being influenced by the DSP and the set output level. Now there are three selectable options. PreFX shows the level before all DSP processing and the volume control, which equals the input level. PreFX can be useful to show a missing input signal or clipping signals. PostFX is the way it worked so far, where the level is shown after effects and volume to show the real output level and overloads caused by processing. The dual mode combines the best of both worlds. Pre-FX is shown as a thin bar on the outside of the meters, post-FX as a thicker bar in the middle. Note that the numbers shown in the dual mode on the right side are post-FX. Number 3. Active mono mode is now shown in the lower taskbar. If one of the mono options has been activated, the status is now indicated directly in the lower taskbar. Number 4. Assigning crossfeed and DA filters to the remap keys. The assignment of various functions to the four keys on the front of the device was also a firmware update. In the last update, the different crossfeed settings and the five filters of the DAC can now also be assigned to these keys. In total, 40 commands are now available for remapping under Setup, Options, Hardware Diagnosis. Number 5. Deactivating the volume screen. This option disables the volume screen that is shown when changing the volume through the big volume encoder. The current volume value is still visible in the status bar, but screens like the analyzer are no longer hidden during volume changes. Number 6. Faster and quicker vertical auto scroll. The auto scroll activated by continuously pressing the first or second encoder now works much faster and reacts much quicker. Number 7. New Total Reset. The combination of pressing encoder 1 and 2 plus the volume key while turning up the unit erased all settings except the EQ curves. With the new update, Total Reset means a full factory reset, including the user EQ presets. Per channel. The digital trim for the analog inputs, which allows for up to 6 dB of gain, is now set separately for the left and right channel, giving you more control of the input signal. Number 9. Fixed output level. So far, all analog outputs were always adjustable, although independently, by the volume knob. This can now be changed by the ability to lock the analog output level to a specific value. This is done by the entry lock volume in the input-output menu of the analog outputs. With lock volume active, the volume knob can no longer be used to change the output level. The volume adjustment within the menu still works and is used to set the fixed output level. The lock state is indicated in the volume screen. With this option, the analog outputs can act as several units. For example, 
If the analog output should operate like a typical hi-fi unit at 2 volts output level, equaling plus 8 dBU, set the hardware reference level to plus 13 dBU and volume to minus 5 dB. Number 10. Improved class compliant compatibility. While all our class compliant devices work perfectly on Mac OS X, iOS and Linux, in some other cases they did not. When Windows 10 version 1709 finally added its own UAC2 driver, we investigated and updated the firmware for full compatibility. ADI2 Pro and DAC also became compatible to some other devices. Logitech's Squeezebox Touch, which did not show the ADI2 DAC at all, now recognizes the unit and can use it as an audio source via USB. Synology DS213 Plus now works perfectly with both devices. Windows 10 fully accepts the ADI2 Pro and DAC as a two-channel record and two-channel playback device. PCM up to 384 kHz and DSD up to DSD 256 are supported. So basically there is no driver installation necessary under Windows 10 unless you want to use SEO and DigiCheck or the firmware update tool. Number 11. Better menu structure. The vast array of updates caused the original menu structure at some point to be cluttered and slow to navigate. For example, hardware diagnosis had 16 entries, device mode 10. Finding the correct entry not only required a lot of scrolling, users often searched for an expected entry in the wrong subpage. To fix this problem, the menu underwent a simple but major overhaul. Everything relating to display control was moved into the new menu page display, which now has the entries display mode, meter color, horizontal meter, auto dark mode, show volume screen, LCD brightness and LCD tint control. Everything related to the headphones was moved into the new menu page phones, which now has the entries dual phones, balanced phones mode, phones to line, mute versus TRS 1 and 2 and mute versus TRS 3 and 4. And finally, the option digital outsource was moved from the subpage hardware diagnosis to the subpage device mode. Number 12. Avoid intersample peaks in the sample rate converter. When using the sample rate converter, Signals higher than 0 dBFS, so-called intersample peaks, which can typically be up to plus 3 dBFS, result in digital distortion. These distortions occur with all sample rate converter chips known to us. The firmware update gave the sample rate converter 6 dB headroom to address this issue. Number 13. Disabling the automatic DSD over PCM detection. This option turned out to be useful when using the ADI2 Pro as a measurement front end and generating extreme high frequencies. But it's nothing to worry about if one is just listening to music. The setting can be found in Setup, Options, Device Mode, DSD Detection. <laughs>